Well, all right, folks, what's happening? All right, so I have gotten a whole bunch of new knives in lately. So I decided to do a new knife collection video. As you can see, there's a decent amount, nothing crazy. But, uh, yeah, I got quite a bit to go over here. Um, I put my brass knuckles in there just for the fuck of it. I got four pairs of those, and then, of course, a couple flip open knife, you know, trench knife type deals. Um, I am missing one of those, though. There should be one more. It's a camouflaged with a flip open spring assist blade, and I have no idea where it's at. But other than that, I think this is everything. I could be missing something. It's very possible. But we'll go over these real quick. Do a quick overview. Looking at all of them. Let's see. It's Winchester. That was 30 bucks. This is a Parker knife my dad gave me. I've shown quite a few of these already. Um, K-Bar my dad gave me. This is the bayonet blade that I got here recently that I need to sharpen still. This is my dad gave me. It was uh, the Rambo knife from the first Rambo. Well, I've seen other knives on TV saying that, or on YouTube saying that they were the Rambo knife, but I'm pretty sure that's the one from the first movie. Maybe he had a different one in other movies. I'm not sure. Uh, trench knife. This is actually a case knife. I didn't know much about case knives until I started looking into them and learned about them on YouTube. I, uh, that was my grandpa's. So that needs to be sharpened again. That's a Western knife from my dad. That is the new Civivi Elementum fixed blade, which is fucking tight. The little dagger that I've always had. Um, a couple ice picks. The comb knife. These are my old throwing knives. Um, I forgot to put those on one or the other, like that knife collection video. So you can see they've been worn pretty well. It used to have three, but I broke the tip off of one of them. But got a lot of good practice in these are the new ones. I'll, I like the weight of these better. These are, that's a spring assist. This one, I think it said ball bearing or something, but it's essentially spring assist. So is this, the Crambit. This is the new CVV Elementum flipper button lock um, this is the new pyrite bowie from CJRB this is a Civivi brazen with a tonneau blade uh, here's a stick here we got flip open knuckle knife another uh, flip open spring assist knuckle knife but it's missing the screw unfortunately these are just a couple little utility knives for just random shit you know box cutters whatever or you might a little simple shit around the house. Um, spring assist. I don't know if that was in the last knife collection video or not. Oh, I already did this. Okay, so anyways, these are my automatic knives. You got two of these. This one's a different kind of push button. This old style. This is the Buck Automatic. That's probably the most expensive one on this table. Two hundred fucking dollars. Did I've been looking at some of the prices on some of these videos like Benchmade? Get the fuck out of here, dude. I'm on like $800 for a fucking folding pocket knife, dude. They're out of their fucking minds. People still buy the shit. This is a traditional manual knife. Another manually open knife. Uh, this is, well, the Oppenel. Oppenel, Oppenel. This is some, I don't know what this is for. This is my grandpa's stuff. This is um, uh, Camelus. My dad gave me, I got two of these. This is a Victoronics. Um, my grandpa, he worked in a mill for probably the last 30 years of his working career. And he had some people who had bought the company out from Japan. And when they came over, they gave him a couple of these, like three or four of them. He had one, my aunt had one, um, my brother had one, which he put on his key ring and used it until it fucking probably broke and got lost. Mine is still... He, my grandpa had this 20 years at least when he gave it to me. And I've had it for at least a good 10 years. So it's definitely getting older, still brand new, unused. And then, of course, I got my automatic switchblade comb. And then, I got these bastards here, these uh, long and short sword blades. I think I might have showed those on a video at some point, but never mind all the shit on the floor. I had to move everything off the table in order to have room for all these knives. I didn't realize I had quite that many. So I'm going to flip this around here, and we'll just kind of show them each one, one at a time here. All right, so... This is the Winchester knife. This thing's pretty dope. This is a nice ass, just a big fucking blade, dude. Look at that sucker. Nice Winchester Bowie knife, essentially. Um, I know there's a lot of debate between Bowie or Bowie. I don't know. I've heard people say, well, his name was Jim Bo uh, Jim Bowie, so it has to be Bowie. Well, how the fuck do you know it was really Jim Bowie? Did you ask the guy? I'm pretty sure you didn't, so. Or any of his fucking immediate relatives. I'm sure you didn't ask any of them, so. 
I say it could be either or, but me personally, I just call it a Bowie knife because one, Bowie sounds stupid to me, and two, uh, you know, the letters, his name is spelled B-O-W-I-E. Now, B-O-O is boo, and B-O-W is normally bow, so I just think Bowie sounds like it, seems like it should be the proper one, but personally, I don't give a fuck what you call it. I call it a Bowie knife because it sounds better to me. I feel stupid saying Bowie. But this thing has had some, not tons of use, but I've, I've practiced using it as a throwing knife. And believe it or not, this sucker fly as good as a throwing knife. I threw it at an old closet door when it was like thin, you know, cheaply made uh, wood panel folding closet doors. One time I just chucked that bitch. It went all the way through to, to the fucking stopper. It just, bah, all the way through the fucking door. It was tight. It works very well as a throwing knife, believe it or not. <coughs> Next we got... Pops is uh, Parker. This thing's fucking cool. More of a survival type knife, I guess. Very, very nice. I'm learning quite a bit about knives here lately. You know, whenever I get into something, I really try to get into it very, you know, really, really try to learn as much as possible. That's why I learned so much about these old Smiths and Colts because I'm interested in them. So I try to learn absolutely as much as I possibly can. But what I've found is that people pay some fucking stupid fucking prices for knives. I'm pissed off at myself for spending $200 on this fucking thing. I love it, but man, I still can't get over the fact that I spent $200 on a fucking pocket knife. It just sit. I'm not going to put it in my pocket and let it get fucked up or more than it already did when I put it in a sheet that got fucked up. Now the brass on it's looking tarnished. I don't even fucking use it. It looks like it's getting fucking old, so I might just have to use it after all. But this thing's badass, so I love this thing. It's a nice fucking solid blade. <coughs> And of course, the K bar. Now I swear, I don't know if it's you're not gonna see this on the video. I don't think, but I swear when I first got this, it was like a lighter color. I swear this thing looked lighter. Now I don't know if it has something to do with the fact that I kept oil put oil on the blade, and I wipe it to where it was like still damp but not soaked. So I don't know if some of that soaked through and it made it do this. But I swear this looks like a like a darker maroon, like almost like a maroon or brown, like a dark brown, darker brown than it was. And same with the handle, the leather on here. Uh, I don't know how it could have gotten up to here, the oil that I put on the blade, but I did always put some on here too. But I'll tell you what though, this thing looks, it just looks even cooler than it already fucking did. I absolutely fucking love this thing. And the blade is still, it's still got that dried out look to it, which is unfortunate, but it's still beautiful. It's still a solid fucking knife, and I just, you know, put more oil on it occasionally. But I love how it looks like, it just darkened up a little bit. Because a lot of these, when you see them, they have almost an orange look or like a real, real light look to them. And I, I just, I love the fact that fucking light has got to go. Let me go fix that problem real quick. All right, that's a little better there, sorry. But yeah, this thing's fucking tight, dude. It is such a good feeling in my hand. I put this tie-down strap on it, it's a shoelace. I would love to walk around with this thing just on my hip, dude. But I got no real practical purpose to do it. In Indiana, where I live, you can do that. You can literally walk around with this on your hip and nobody can do shit about it. But... I just, well, I don't want to fuck it up either, because I, you know, I'm going to be banging it up against shit and tearing it up, you know, but it's just, I love this fucking knife. This thing is just, it's very cool, very historical, just very, very nice and sharp as can be. This thing is really cool. <laughs> yeah, put that one back in the sheet. All right, next we got the unsharpened. The unsharpened uh, bayonet knife. But this one, I'm working on that knife sharpen. Problem is, I have no fucking time. I, I dude, during the week, like the last uh, last few weeks, I mean, last three years and a few months, I have been just busier than shit after work. I got no kids, no wife, and I have no fucking time. Saturday's the only day I can spend with Jackie. Um, you know, I take her to my mom's most days of the week, so she's around people and not just sitting here by herself or with the crazy cat. Um, and that way she at least travels around in as many places as she can with me after work. But I have no time, so I haven't had time to mess with the sharpener too much. But I am going to work on it today a little bit. Not this knife, but I'm just, I'm just trying to get used to using it so I can learn to do it very efficiently. But this thing's fucking cool as shit, man. Get this sucker sharpened up. Nice and sharp, dude. That is a cool-ass knife. I just wish it would have came sharpened. But what can you do? 
sharpen it. That's what you do. So now we got the Rambo knife. I've shown several of these before. This fucking saw blade on the back, which that shit's kind of sharp. Nice sharp ass blade in the front. Got the magnifying glass. Start fires with. This is, you know, survival knife. It's got a compass on the bottom, although my dumbass saw. I don't know how I did it. Oh, oh, oh. I cracked the fucking thing on here. I don't know what I did. It wasn't like that before. I have no idea how that happened because it just sits it put away. I, I don't know what the fuck I did to it. But it's got the compass. And inside of this thing, you unscrew it. And it's got uh, some fishing line with a hook and some matches and a little strike pad. So, catch some fish and cook them, I guess. But it's funny because... All these different survival knives I see, I've been looking up like the SE knives and uh, like some of the K bar Becker knives and all these different ones, dude. And it's funny, I mean, I see like the people do the videos and reviews of them and like they'll put them, do a bunch of shit to see how well they hold up in the survival situation. But the funny part is, 99% of the people that are buying stuff like survival knives aren't gonna ever fucking need them. They're never even gonna be in a position to ever need them. Me personally, when the fuck am I ever gonna be out in the middle of fucking nowhere? Not that I wouldn't mind getting the fuck away and being out in the middle of nowhere, but honestly, I'm never going to need a survival knife, not for any fucking reason. Even camping, I don't go camping. I don't have time to go camping. I don't have money to go camping. Um, but anyhow, I mean, just, I'll never need a survival knife. 99.9% .9 chance I will never need one, but they're cool as shit to have. They're nice. Very cool ass little knives. You know, this thing's nice. Wow. Very nice knife. Alright, actually, let me take these out of the sheaths. Because I'm at the end of this, I'm gonna do a quick aerial view of the table with everything out so I can see everything. <coughs> Got one knife turned the wrong way, can't have that. <coughs> Next we got this son of a bitch. The killer. Needs to be sharpened. It's not very sharp. Not really. The point is, I mean, with this kind of thing, I mean, you might need, you know, if you're in war or something, in a battle, you know, you might need to slash with it. But, uh, I mean, I think it's more for stabbing and then just, just fucking laying someone's ass out with these knuckles. This thing's crazy. Which I'm going to skip ahead real fast. And this is that. It's inspired heavily off of the trench knife. This thing, I wish this wasn't fucked up. I wish it wasn't missing a screw out of it. It even says 1918 US. It's like, this is. Not that I wouldn't carry this though, because it's just so fucking big and bulky that it just takes up too much room, but it's still cool as shit. I just wish that it worked properly. I just fucked it up too. There we go. That little liner lock flipped to the other side, which is what I was talking about before with some of these knives. It can do that. This one, obviously, because it's missing a screw, but, you know, it does happen with them. Like, I've been watching, um, seen, I've been watching videos about the Civivi knives and this Pirate Bowie and these other ones I got. Um, and people talking, like, man, videos come with, like, bad blade blade play is it worth buying i'm like dude you gotta just tighten the fucking screw man when you have a knife you sit and flip there's a spring assist or a flip open or uh any kind of shit that you're flipping it open you gotta tighten the screw once in a while because the more you play with it the more the, the screw comes loose trust me i know that's why i have half these things because i like to sit and fucking play with them but that's why i got cuts all over my hand <laughs> but uh but that's it you just gotta tighten the screws up a little bit and I've noticed with the new ones, the Civivis and that Pyrite, um, I can actually tighten them, like, you know, snug, and you can still, the blade still works. Uh, some of the spring assist ones, you tighten it too tight, and it just comes halfway open, and that doesn't work properly if you tighten it too much. You have to find, like, a perfect sweet spot. So, like, this one, I found a perfect spot with that one. I, you know, played it enough, tightened it enough, and adjusted it enough to where now it just stays where it should. I get it. You know, a couple other ones I've worked worked them out, like worked, worked broke them in properly, I should say. But this thing, I do. This is just, this is just a fucking mean motherfucker right here, dude. I mean, this is just, 
it can cause you to have a real bad fucking day. Just stab someone and then beat their ass with these sharp fucking brass knuckles, dude. Good lord. <laughs> so, this is a case knife from my grandpa. They probably use this for hunting, like, skin and stuff, or something along them lines, because this is actually really dull. And it says, raise your edge on it, if you can... Well, trust me, it says razor edge on the mug. Tested, double X, razor edge. But, it got a lot of use, so it is very dull. But, cool little fillet knife. It's got the leather leather bands around it to make up the handle. It's got this little pommel on the end. You can bash someone's hand, you know? Playing cards, they try to fucking cheat you. Bah! You know? I don't know, just fucking around. But anyways, this thing's cool. Very cool. Very nice little blade. But once I... See, this is one I really don't want to fuck up sharpening it. So once I get really good at it, then I'm going to work on this and get it nice and sharp again. I just don't want to scratch up the blade or do anything fucking stupid with it. This one came from my dad. Western Knife. It's Western brand. Um, I don't know if that's really like a Bowie knife or not right there, but I don't know if that's a clip point or not. Truthfully, I couldn't tell you. I haven't learned all the terminology yet, like the difference between a, a hollow grind and fucking all the different shit. I, I don't know all that yet, but one day, I'm working on it. You got the leather bands. I love these leather bands. Now, these at the end that have the color to them, I think those may be like a rubber, because they don't quite look like leather when you look at them closely, but I love how this feels with this with this leather. Just like the K-Bar, it's just got the gaps in between the, the, the leather bands, but just man it's just such a fucking nice grip on this thing dude there's some blades got some tarnished spots on it kind of hard to see yeah there you go see little black spots on it this side you can see that one so i like to get that cleaned up i tried taking some polish and going on it but it didn't really work it's got this little brass uh guard right here jackie she must be having some dreams she's kicking her feet and kicking me but it's a nice little blade. I like this a lot. I didn't really like it that much when I first got it. My dad gave me this years ago, and I kind of just put it away and forgot about it. But it's, it's grown on me very much. <coughs> now, for one of my new ones. The Civivi Elementum, which I really like the Elementums. With the fixed blade. Now, I was going to get the one with the micarta handle, because I, I never even heard of micarta until I started looking at the knives. And I fucking love it. I don't have one yet that's got a micarta handle. I was going to get this one with the micarta handle, but of course you can only get it with like the stainless type blade. You can't get it with the blacked out blade, which is what I really wanted. But in the end, when I got my regular flipper elementum, uh, I was looking at videos and I saw an all blacked out flipper button lock. And I was like, man, I just, I, I, so when I was going to get the other one, but then I swore when I saw an all blacked out version of the flipper button lock, I was like, you know what, dude, I, I think I should just get this. So. Nice little fucking knife, dude. Nice blade on it. It's very sharp. Yeah, so I can do a little chipping right here. It's got a G10 handle on it. If I can get the thing to focus right. The lighting is kind of poor, to be honest with you. Anyhow, it's a nice knife. It's not a big one. You know, it's more of a moderate size, but man, it feels good in your hand. Feels very good. Just it's perfect fit, you know. And you got this little. Ow. They made it just like how the. It looks like it has a flipper. Like that's how that would look on the. It uh, looks on the um, the flipper ones. You know, I give you that so you can get your finger up on up high, nice and high on it if you want. You got the chipping up here. I think they call it jimping, maybe, but I don't know. I just call it chipping. Grooves. It's got some fucking grooves. And how's that? But nice blacked out blade all blacked out version of the knife is very very cool all your badging is on this side very cool ass little knife man i'm very very happy with this thing i like this a lot dude i want to start carrying it man I, I i already carry like three fucking knives anyways so i don't really need to but i put this up on my hip on my belt right on my side here and it just disappears under my shirt like you can't even see it 
um, moving around for the most part. I mean, a couple of movements might make it print a little bit, like if you bend over the one way or something, but for the most part, this thing just lays flush on my side and you cannot see it. You don't even know it's there, especially if you got like a hoodie on or something. Nobody ever knows it's there. And I'm not big on Kydex, but I do like this on this sheath. I like to get this sucker wrapped in leather though. I seen somebody that, that had made one like that and it's cool, you get the, the leather sheath to it, but you still hear the you know the sounds of the Kydex. But that's eh, not bad, not bad. It's a nice little belt clip on it. Just uh, although I gotta say putting it on, I have to loosen my belt and put it on. Mostly because I'm on the last notch on my belt because I'm fucking skinny and my, my pants are gonna fall down if I don't use the last notch. It's kind of hard to wedge this in there, so I have to loosen the belt and put it on. But to take it off, I can just reach down and pop. These little things are kind of hard to work sometimes, but you pop it open, just then it'll come right out. But what I think I don't understand is, I don't know what the fuck this is for. Because this shit slides up and down. And I'm not quite sure. Unless maybe, you know what, that might be like if you have a smaller belt, maybe that'll it'll, it'll keep it firm to the belt. That's probably what that's for, honestly. I think about it. my belt kind of takes up the whole space, so that might help keep it from wobbling around too much. But this son of a bitch is badass. It's a nice little fucking knife. And then we come to one of my all time favorite knives the little dagger. I even like the sheath a lot, it's perfect. I used to sit in my back pocket, I put my phone in my oh, I'm looking for my phone, jeez. Um, I put my phone in my back left pocket and I put this between like, you know, the material of the pocket and my phone So it's like on the back edge and it's nice. It just takes a pop your thumb You got your, fight, your little dagger here. Just makes a wonderful little throwing knife, too I'm not gonna throw it cuz I'm gonna fuck it up. It's already got some Shit missing on the handle because I was carrying it in my back pocket. It started scratching up the handle and getting rid of the finish on it But I don't even know what company this is. I think I looked it up 440 stainless Japan isn't isn't I think the Japanese knives have to be sharpened at a different different angle for Japanese stainless steel I think I read something about that not that this really needs it but probably couldn't couldn't hurt get a little sharper but what does it say right there I don't know I can't read that yeah I can't read it because it's backwards while I'm looking at it right now. It looks backwards to me. Eh. Oh, that's the company of... Oh, Taylor. Is it Taylor? Oh, Valor. Valor, that's who it is. That's right. I don't know if I can find any more of these or not, but I'd love to have another one. Arkansas Toothpick. Then we got the Mafia's Greatest Hits. Fucking ice picks. I mean, they're just cool. You know, these are like switchblades, you know, they're just fucking bananas. Well, hi, darling, what do you need? Jackie's clean. You need something. What's up, babe? Well, she just wants some attention. She probably wants some water, too. Yeah, these, this is a Coca Cola one. This one has no brand. This is in my grandpa's garage. I mean, I'm assuming this is an ice pick. This might be for something else. It could be some kind of tool that I'm just unaware of. There's a lot of shit I don't know, so. But either one of them, you can like it is. But they're cool. I kind of like the switchblades, you know? They're just so fucking classic and old school that, you know, why not have them? Uh, let's see. Next, we got. <coughs> get in here. What the fuck? Jackie, why would I put a comb in this thing? Oh, yeah, because it's a fucking knife. Looks like a nail file. <laughs> that ain't very sharp. This is one I need to sharpen up, too. But, uh, that's just, you know, another cool little fucking novelty, you know? I keep it in my, my bag. I can't just, I mean, I don't carry it on me. It just stays in the car or work truck with my toilet bag. I got to pull all kind of shit. Chargers, toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, um, weapons of all kind. I got fucking bullets, I got keys, I got charger cores, I got 
lighters. This goes in there. Um, you know, just random shit, but it's nice. I've seen it. Apparently, dudes uh, these days are apparently wearing fanny packs again. Um, that shit wasn't cool even in the 80s and 90s, so and, yeah, I'm not wearing a fucking fanny pack. But that, it's not bad to keep in the car. It's uh, another classic uh, old school kind of thing, you know. Reminds me of, like the 50s and a leather toilet bag. But uh, anyhow, alright, let's get on with this shit. I got football to watch today. Alright, we'll go this route. Actually, let's do this real quick. <laughs> Double sword. You guys do. You got the long blade. She got a bunch of metal missing, which I didn't have. I wish that wasn't cut out of there. I know it's to make it lighter, but I wish that shit was still there. I don't know why they got the little finger oil on this thing. I guess you're trying to do some wood carving with the fucking sword. <laughs> I imagine that's a tunnel blade. That's what I'm guessing. But, you know, it's. Decently, light, decently long here. And you got its short counterpart, the one-handed version. Also, same kind of blade. Also has a finger twirl on it. Not sure why, but, you know. Looks cool. I mean, it's got this little shitty nylon wrapping around it. This thing was cheap as fuck, so you can't expect a whole lot for fucking $20. All right, now, throwing knives I've had. These have gotten a lot of wear. Probably not that sharp anymore because I've chucked these motherfuckers at some wood quite a bunch of times. But there's still, I could still stick one of these right between someone's fucking ribs. At least a good 10, 15 feet. The new ones, uh, these are a little bit heavier than I thought they were in comparison. Let me see. Uh, these are still heavier. He's got more forward weight. This is kind of like more evened out. So I don't know how these are going to fly through the air very well or not. But what's nice is like you can still use this if you had to. You know, I wouldn't really want to. But you could use it as a fighting knife if you had to. <coughs> these I think you could use a little bit better as a fighting knife. Because you get just a slightly better grip on it. You know, if you had to fucking do so. But. Three. Ein. Zwei. Drei. Three. Go with the top row, my one and only prime it. Although I know it's like supposed to be like an underhanded <coughs> fighting knife, but it's like you only get one good motion because when you come back, there's nothing sharp, you know. So you get one one swing and then you gotta you know reset. But this thing feels pretty good like this, and you can cut shit open. You gotta cut a box open. <laughs> It'll cut some like mail open for you, or you can you know fight with it. But either way, as my little dipping my toes into the karambit world I'm not a big fan of them to be honest with you but I do really like this one a lot this thing looks cool as shit and this is like fucking ten dollars it's got the liner lock on it it's a spring assist that's pretty cool I do I do like it I do like it I can't keep all these open because not enough room on the table now here's my Civivi Elementum 2 flipper button lock I got the natural jade look to it. This shit's dope. Nice sharp little blade. Of course, now mind you, I had this for like fucking three hours. Okay, three hours. Get out of the get out of the car when I got home. Like after I picked it up from my mom's place, <sighs> sitting between my legs, my dumb ass forgot to check. Fell right out on the asphalt. Got a couple little fucking dings right there and right there already. Three hours I had this fucking thing. It's like a $60 fucking knife and I dropped it on the fucking pavement. But that's nothing compared to the story about the next one. We can get a little higher grip on it. What's up, baby? Right, let me get her some water real quick. She's very spoiled. She gets water delivered to her half the time. So, yeah, she just sits up and starts licking her lips. And that's her way of saying, hey, bitch, go get me some water. <laughs> so, I'm going to get her some water. Give me a second. All right, she's good now. So, anyway, got a G10 handle on it. I dig this fucking thing, though. I like it. I would like an all blacked out one, and I would like one with the black blade and the army green handle. Plus, there's some older ones that I saw that, like, just the regular flipper liner locks. 
Um, they have one that's got this, like, it's got my card on it, but it's not the... Not the more common my card I see. I don't know what you call it, but it's like... Almost looks like a flannel pattern on this one, and it's, uh... It's just like this, it just doesn't have the button. It's got a liner lock, and it's got a blacked-out tonneau blade. And like a brown type of flannel looking micarta on it it looks really fucking nice man i've seen a guy or two on here on youtube that have one and i want to buy one but it says they're discontinued which is fucking why the fuck do these companies got to do that shit yeah i guess down the road if their shit's worth anything if it ends up becoming collectibles or whatever then limited editions will be worth more and so forth but damn it dude i really fucking there's a few of those a few different ones i like to get I also had a tunnel blade i don't know if i mentioned that or not really cool ass knife and there's more of these, there's a couple of these I like to get other than just those other two, but this thing's a really cool little fucking knife, nice and sharp, ooh, nice and sharp, it's got the button lock, see so this, oh, that was the smoothest close, usually it doesn't want to, normally it'll be like, it'll like bounce out and it'll end up, it'll like come down, hit, and then bounce, and it's not like that, so you gotta hold the blade until it stops dinging around. It must be some kind of magnet or something that, see how it kind of, it like has a little bit of a pull that keeps it in place. I don't know if it's a magnet or what the fuck, it's probably not a magnet, but something kind of gives it some inner pull so it doesn't pop open on its own. You could also hold the button down and just, see it does like that. See how it hold it until it stops bouncing. Yeah, see how it stopped kind of out a little bit, but um, you can always just I like this a lot though. Very nice. Very nice little knife. Except for the chips I fucking put on like a dumb fuck. Now, the next one. This is this is even better, okay? This one I got first. The pirate boy, I got this one in the mail first. Beautiful little knife, fucking just gorgeous, okay? I ended up buying some paracord and I tied that up myself. I'm not too sure about it. I see fucking people with lanyards like this on their knives. I don't know what the fucking purpose is. So I put one on here trying to see if I can figure it out, see if I like it. I mean, it looks alright, but I don't know. It's probably going to end up coming back off because I don't really see the purpose in it. But if anybody knows why people have this shit on their knives, it would be nice to know. Um, but anyways... So I had this one, three hours. Just got home the same day I got it, and I'm outside playing around as a button lock also. And I was trying to flick it open with my left hand because I'm right-handed and I'm, I haven't quite gotten it down yet. Plus I just tighten these screws so it doesn't want to go all the way unless you really hit it. See? Plus I'm not that good with my left hand yet. I had it figured out the other day. I was doing good. There it goes. But I was trying to practice that outside while I was having a cigarette, and I dropped this one on the ground as well. Not only did I scratch up the wood, which I don't know if it's going to show up on here, uh, I might not be catching the light, it probably will, but I don't know. Anyways, it's kind of scuffed the wood right here, but it also put a chink in the blade. I fucking can't believe it, but it did. I don't know if you can see it, because I've been working on it with the sharpener. I didn't want to start doing new knives too early with the sharpener. Fuck, it ain't gonna show up, is it? Come on, sharpen you, bastard. The camera, I mean. Anyways, um, right up. This fucking camera is garbage. You know, a screensaver, a TV. Oh well. Anyways, it put a little little chip right in the blade, right in here, and it was jagged when you run your fingers down. And I, dude, I was so fucking pissed off. And then the, when the like a couple days later came, and then I dropped this one, dude, I was fucking fuming. I was so mad at myself, dude. So I took that sharpener and it just very lightly on the the highest grain is like an eight thousand, I think. I just very slowly, just do it a few times, wipe it off, do it a few times, wipe it off, and I didn't scratch up the blade, thank God, but there's still a little tiny chip right there, and I need to just keep going a little bit more until I get it out of there, 
which is almost gone. You can, that's why you can barely, I, I mean, I can hardly even notice it, and I know where it's at. I mean, needless to say, for a fucking $70 fucking knife, I'm really pissed off at myself about that. But anyhow, mount the knife. Great fit in my hand. It's got the little choke up spot on it. You know, I mean, it's pretty much just gonna sit. Try to keep it as nice as possible. It's got the button lock, you know, so you can fucking you can flip it that way. Yeah, it just kind of comes loose when you're holding the button down. And I thought you had to hold the button. You, I, for a minute, I thought maybe you'd have to hold the button when you open it, but you don't. So I'm, I'm already flipping it open this way. It doesn't want to fly open, though, because like I said, I just tightened it. But it's not too bad. But this thing's cool as shit, man. I don't know why they didn't make something like this sooner. This is such a beautiful little knife. Got these clips on it so you can make it disappear in your pocket and still hang on to something, but... Usually for a pocket knife of this size or these Civivis, I usually use the fifth pocket, the coin pocket on your jeans. If I'm wearing jeans, I'm wearing shorts right now, so they don't have it on here. You get that extra little pocket up above your right pocket up here. You put coins and shit in or what have you. Um, I usually put a pocket knife in there just to keep it from getting scratched up on anything else. But this thing is pretty dope. I like it very much, so... Although, honestly, I don't really like any other knife I've seen on the CJRB website. I don't like any of them. That's the only one I actually really, really, really like a lot. The rest of them I don't like at all. Now, this is BB the Brazen. Now, of course, it's got the natural jade finish with the blacked out tonneau blade on it. Um, what's up, baby? And then, uh, right after I made my purchase, I saw that they have a button lock version of this. Now, the button lock version has a stainless tonneau blade with this handle and I would have not gotten that one because it would be too much like my other one that we got so I would have ended up going with the army green handle and the blacked out tunnel blade with the push button lock which I really fucking wish I would have seen that first because I would have went with that one instead but it's still a very nice knife this thing is extremely sharp super sharp it's the same kind of deep carry pocket clip on it but, you know, I think this, you, you could kind of grab it here, but you're getting pretty close to the fucking blade. But if you, you know, pull back on it instead of pushing up, I mean, you could still essentially use it for the same thing. It's got a liner lock on it. It's got the thumb studs. I'm not good at flicking these open with the thumb studs, though. Let's see. <laughs> ha! There it goes. But it's a cool-ass little blade. It's even got, like, a little bend right in here too. I don't know if that's gonna show on the camera. Now. There you go. See, it's just got a slight little bend on it. My narrow's coming forward. But this is very nice too. I like that a lot. Like $60 fucking knife though. Then we get to the, the knuckle knives. You know, got a liner lock on this. It's like, if the knuckles ain't enough, if it ain't enough, now you got a trench knife. Got a partially serrated blade, the knuckle duster, duster extreme, I think. Yep, the duster extreme. It's pretty extreme. I'm not gonna lie. I used to carry this around with me until I got it. it's just a standard pair of brass knuckles. Um, I like this a lot. That's why it's kind of scratched up. If you can see, like right there and shit from coins and shit scratching up against it. But uh, sometimes this thing would come open too easily in my pocket, and I go to stick my hand in my pocket, and it would be sitting there like this, and I you know like this. I stick my hand in my pocket, and just stab myself in the hand or cut my finger. So that's one of the reasons I stopped using this in my pocket. That way, I just carried a couple knives, and you know what? I am missing a fucking knife, and I don't know where the fuck. Give me a second. All right, I forgot. It was one. I tried thinking of all of them. I forgot. Oops. My new boot knife, and I carry it when I'm wearing my boots. Although now that it's summertime, uh, I'm not wearing my boots as much. I'm wearing my sandals more because it's getting nice out. And in the summertime, I either have my work boots on or I got my sandals on, of some kind, because I just fucking hate. I love having my feet just out in the air, you know. But when I'm wearing my boots, I got my little M Tech push dagger boot knife, and it fits perfect, man. I got this string around it because. 
my, I just stuck this down inside of my boot. Like I put it right along here, essentially, kind of in the back part of my boot. So it would just kind of start making its way out and it, you know, something could grab it and pull it out of my boot. So I took this and then when I, I pull my sock up, tie this around it and then I fold it. I just tie it like I'm tying a pair of shoelaces and I fold the sock down over the top and it keeps it from coming untied. And that way it does not move all day long. It'll sit right there, just tucked in next to, just behind that, that ankle bone right there. It's perfect. Works perfectly actually. Uh, I already showed this one. I, I gotta find a fucking, oh, sorry, I gotta find a screw to fix that with. Here's the one, this is an m -Tech also, I'm pretty sure. Spring assist. Ah, it's like some futuristic fucking robot knife or something, but, or a knife that a robot would use. And yeah, m -Tech. this is the one I've been practicing sharpening with. It's a $10, $10 knife. This one's always a lot heavier than the other ones that I bought. This shit is really heavy compared to the rest of the pocket knives. But that's one of the reasons I never really carried it. See, I've tightened that one up lately, and it just doesn't always want to pop open. Tighten them fucking bolts up at the top. But there you go. A little thing you can work with. But this is what I've been working on sharpening, and I'm sure you can see some scratches on the blade. If this fucking piece of shit camera would ever focus properly. There we go. See, there's some scratches on the blade because I just don't know what, didn't know really what I was doing. And I've literally, this was a Tano blade. I've almost taken the fucking point out of it from sharpening it, dude. <laughs> it's almost gone. Because it came to a real, like that other one did. And it's slowly but surely just, just straightening out the curve there, dude. <laughs> Which I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep it the way it was. But I'm trying to learn how to, you gotta sharpen that part and you gotta sharpen the knife. So, like, you know, this, and then you have to sharpen this separately, and I've just almost taken it. I've literally, it's almost been removed, which sucks, but that's why I use this one, because it's never been, I mean, I like it, don't get me wrong, it's cool as shit. See, when it opens properly, it's cool as shit. But, if you give it, like, a little, then it definitely comes out, but it's not a bad little blade, but it's still, uh, Decent shot. I have actually officially made it a little bit sharper than it was. Um, <coughs> see if it'll... It's kind of a jagged cut, you can see, so it's not perfect, but it's getting there. But, like I said, if I was going to fuck up any knife, I figured that would be the one. It's probably my least favorite out of all my knives. And then we got the fucking the meat cleaver. This I've been carrying. I've just been carrying this in my back pocket. I use it for whatever. It's just it's ridiculously oversized, but I've really grown to love that about it. I actually am very happy that it came in such a large size. But uh, this little clip right here. When I'm sitting, when I found that the first couple of times I had it in my back pocket when I'm sitting in the car seat, we got leather seats for the first time ever in our car. And um, when I'm sitting on that, it leaves a fucking deep, sharp impression of that right there in the seat. Thank God it's went away so far the couple of times that I did it. And I realized, once I realized, now I have, to, I have to remember to take it out of my back pocket before I sit down in the car seat because I don't want to fucking cut a hole in the leather. Because of a clip of a knife, I'd be fucking, I'd be so pissed at myself. And I don't seem to like to just, you know, do stupid shit like that and ruin things of mine, so. I really am trying to be careful with that. But this thing is, is got to be bearings in there, some kind of ball bearings, because it's not a spring assist at all. Not, not at all. Just kind of flops loose. But this thing's so fucking cool. Got the liner lock on it. I don't even know if that's considered a liner lock because it's just the whole fucking thing itself instead of like inside. So that's probably something different. Probably call it something different, but it's essentially the same thing. But yeah, I've been carrying this in my back pocket. Kind of sits like that. So all people really see is that. I love that thing though. I do. And then we got fucking pearly, pearly switchblade. This one sounds kind of weird. I don't know if this is going to pick this up on the camera. It probably will, but it has a weird sound when it opens. It's got this weird, like, I don't know. 
you fucking serious? Wow. That's what I do. Thankfully, I didn't fucking... I hope I did. Yeah, I did right there. Put a fucking gash. And of course, out of all the ones it was, this is the one my dad gave me. This little tiny gash right there. And he even fucking put it... Oh, dang it. Fucking hell. Good guy. That's what I'm saying. And I fucking sabotage myself and my own shit all the fucking time. And it drives me out of my head, dude. I can't even tell you how fucking tired I am of ruining my shit. I just want to keep my stuff nice. I couldn't hit this little piece of shit fucking knife. It had to be the one my dad gave me. Of course. <sighs> Anyhow, let's see if we can get the sound to pick up. It's really kind of annoying. It doesn't do it every time, but most of the time. Right as it makes impact at the back. No, it's not doing it now, really. Oh, yeah, it is. And you compare that to the sound of the other one. That one sounds like how a switchblade should sound. This one has this weird, like, metal springy kind of bing sound to it. Let's see. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's still a cool ass knife. And it almost seems like it's even faster than this one. But. So my back. I made this one the backup one, so in case something ever happens with this one, I'll have another. But I don't like that sound at all. I mean, not that it really matters if I needed it to defend myself from Jackie. I ain't gonna give a fuck what it sounds like. But I'm just saying, this doesn't sound quite right. But this one, the one I carry this in my pocket every day too. I was putting it in my right front pocket where my keys are. But it just keeps tipping over. It kept tipping over. So all day long, it's just laying like this sideways across my pocket. But I have found that if I put it... If I put it in the sheath that it came in, if I put it in here and put it in my pocket, stick it in here and stand it up so it's like right here, it pretty much stays. For some reason, that's enough to make it like almost hardly ever fall over. And then my keys sit here next to it and kind of help hold it up too. It almost never falls over. I was thinking I was gonna have to come up with some elaborate shit to figure this out, and I put it in there, and that's all I needed. But this thing, I got this broken well where I can just one hand close it. I don't even need to use any. I mean, you can one hand close it anyways by pushing up against something, but it's nice because it just nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Nice and sharp too. You know what's what fucking out here? All right, this is the more modern push button. I mean, it's a push button too, but you know, it's a modern push button. Let's make sure I'm not gonna hit nothing now. And it doesn't make the cool sounds of a switchblade. And this one, you don't you don't work the little guard here. You just push the same button in. And this one's always under tension, no matter what. You hold that button down, or even not holding it down, it's just always under under spring tension. And I don't know why they put this little fingernail groove in here, because you can't even fucking open it like that. <laughs> you have to push the button, so. But, this is my first one, because I did not find one like this yet, a traditional style. So I found this at the gun show first. Um, actually, I think it was a show that I got, that I got um, the Chief Special at. It was. And, it's not bad, though. It's just a one-sided, but... It will still do the trick. But once I got it, I fell in love with it. And I was like, dude, I want a traditional switchblade. This is my original one I got. My first traditional. Now, the problem is, the lock was a little too loose. So I flattened. I pushed down on it real hard. I put it on like on the wood railing outside. And just got to push down to make sure it wouldn't slide as easily. And then, because of which, it started cutting a groove in the fucking plastic. I'm like, dude, what the fuck, man? So, more sabotage and shit. So then I pried it back up a little bit. And now, then it, it was too loose. And I can't get it to go back down. But you can literally just... doesn't matter. I don't care this one anymore anyways. But that just really sucks. But It's not quite as fast as the other ones. And I, had, I think I tried to sharpen this one. I think so. Yeah, it is pretty sharp. Yeah, I did try to sharpen it on a different stone. And I... I actually did get a little sharper, but I scratched the blade up on it, unfortunately, which kind of pisses me off. I don't know if it'll show up or not. A little, you can see kind of, it looks kind of shitty. 
pick up here. You can see some scratches and whatnot, but still, I do like this one. I love this one too. But I like, I've, I've grown to like how these these are heavier and a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, and I've kind of grown to like that better. But uh, I want to get some more like this. Like uh, I want one with like a um, like a fake stag handle. I want to get one with uh, the black handle like this, and I want just another one or two I'd like to get eventually. So now we're to the Buck Automatic, which is not super fast. Some of these other ones are a little, uh, a little bit faster. Some of the other automatic knives are faster, but I found that if you just kind of give it a little a little flick as you open it, it seems like it's incredibly fast. And you still got the back lock on here to, to undo it. And of course, I myself even did it, but when I show people this, they always want to push the button to close it too, and I, I did that too the first two times. I know better, and I still did it. See how it snaps into place? But this is, without a doubt, the sharpest knife that I have. This thing is fucking just noticeably sharper than any other knife I have. It is, I mean, I swear, you, you look at it and it wants to fucking cut you. But you, I don't even want to touch the blade, man, because I've already cut myself a couple times. A few other people that have, I showed it to have cut themselves as well. Because it is just stupidly sharp. But, and then, of course, the traditional manual Buck 112. This is the 110. Now, obviously, the size difference, you can see, um, there's a noticeable size difference. But this is from, like, the late 70s. This is brand new, and you can see now, not that either, I mean, this honestly still feels like just as sturdy and durable of a knife as the 112 that's from decades ago. This thing's a little bit older than I am. So, they still feel like a solid, durable, it, the quality still feels the same, which is very hard to say about most things these days. Most stuff you buy is just horse shit, no matter how much you pay for it. But here's a couple differences I noticed around these uh, bolsters here. See how this rounded off, and this one's like squared off. You see what I mean? It comes out to a solid 90 degree edge, whereas this one over here is kind of a more rounded off. You see? Which, they both look fine in their own way. It's just different. And then this one has this right here, whereas this one doesn't. It's almost like, I guess this would be like the finger toil on the, on the blade, and this one doesn't particularly having them you can always put your finger here I guess or what have you but I'm just saying this almost feels like a slight little bit of a guard whereas this one doesn't have that but I don't think it's ever necessary or what have you but it just just you know differences in how they made stuff and you know how their buck style change between between the years uh, that one's off and this one's more squared off but I've come to realize though that I like the 112 a little bit better. I like that, you know, the handle's shorter, but it's still a full, I can get my whole hand on it. And I like that little shorter blade on it like that. But this is still very, very cool, very cool knife. They both have the back locks on them. Jeez, I can't believe I've been doing this for almost an hour. There's a, just a crappy little manual folding knife I got. This one is, what does it say? Sheffield. I don't know. I got it from a gun show some years back, but you know, it's got the thumb finger studs. You can just flip it open, you know, but it's got the liner lock on it, but you can just get it started and flip it open if you had to. So you can one hand open it that way, or you can just, you know, use the thumb studs and shit. But it's got this little notch right here. I don't know what that's for. But, I don't know, I just picked this up at one point. I thought it was cool, and to be honest with you, I probably should use this to practice sharpening, because I, I just, it's like my least favorite knife that I have. It's not bad, but fuck, it just ain't that, I don't know, I just don't like it that much. The Oppenel knife, you got this little, the blade's locked closed right now. And you turn this right here. This is one my boss gave me. He gave everybody, uh, he always gets like something, you know, something for Christmas. He had a lot of guys so you get us you know some affordable and I think this is one of the coolest things that a boss has ever given me. It's a 
very cool little knife. I don't know what if these had, you know, had some specific purpose, like if they were like, like sailors used them or if they were used for a specific purpose at any point or if it's just their particular style of knives. Because once you open it, you can spin this again and it locks the blade open. These fuckers are super sharp. The blade is very, very thin all the way through. And it's just, you know, it doesn't have that uh, look to the blade like this one. It's got, you know, it's got this little piece up here that's the same width as the rest of it. And, you know, the grind, maybe. I don't know if, that's, if I'm getting that right or not, but that one's just straight up flat. All the way through, and it gets narrower from the you know from the top to the bottom. It gets narrower, but uh, it's a cool ass little knife though. Nice little wooden handle. It's nice and light, and this thing is extremely sharp. It's maybe the second sharpest knife that I have, but very cool little, little something that our boss got us. This is one of my I found in my grandpa's thing. I don't know what the fuck this is used for. I have no idea. If anybody knows what this kind of knife is used for. That'd be cool to know, but it's just a little manual folding. It's as skinny as a pencil. <coughs> Camilla's knife, my dad gave me. I got two of these. It's a dual blade. Pink. A little dual blade, little two little tiny blades on it. I really dig this thing. I love how it looks old school as shit. I think I don't know if it's a honeycomb pattern, if that's what they call that or what. But it's like a, this is like a yellow, like a yellow gold, and not like gold that looks yellow but I mean it actually looks like like gold it looks like a gold color like like yellow gold as opposed to like white gold or something but it's a uh, very old school looking I love this thing that's why I told my dad I was like man do you know where I can get these things and he's like I was like I'd really like to have another one and he's like oh I actually bought I bought a few then and he's like here's I got another one for you so I'm trying to get this in in under an hour because I don't know if it's going to cut me off in an hour or not but this is the one my grandpa had Shoemag. I don't know if that was a company that bought the, the place he was working at. It's got the tweezers. I hope this thing does not cut me off in an hour because it used to cut me off at like 33 minutes, which is an odd place to cut you off. I have a toothpick. I have almost never even pulled these open because I don't I don't even want to mess it up. I cannot believe my brother fucked his up and using his keychain until he lost it. I don't, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have any more. He might, maybe, but I just somehow doubt it. So that's what we got on on, the, on this side. So, I don't know what the fuck that's for. Little blades, and then what do you got? Scissors on the back, I think so. A couple things on the back. Oh, yep, got scissors. And then this thing, I don't know what the fuck that's for. Oh, a nail file. Interesting. And then, last but not least, the least deadliest of them all unless somebody mistakes uh what you got for an actual weapon all right timey it's even got the little lock on it <laughs> i ain't got much hair to comb but you know and then this one this is just yeah you just fold that back down it doesn't even uh Lock in the place. Hey, you fuck with me. You fuck with me. And I'll comb your fucking hair and make it look decent. You understand me, you son of a bitch? I kind of like the handle on this thing, though. It's got these little bumps all over it. Kind of gives you a little more texture. But anyways, that's the collection of knives. Let's do a quick. Alright. That's the gist, except for that one brass knuckle, a uh, knuckle knife that I can't find. It's someplace. I just don't know where the hell I put it. But that's it. Hope you all have a great fucking weekend. Uh, me and Jack are just chilling, watching football all day, and uh, doing as little as possible. You all have a good one. Catch you next time.